the Tennessee Volunteers. Let's see if we can get this thing back on the rails here because it's gone a little crazy. Um, Tennessee, Josh Heupel in his first season really, really got that fan base excited. Uh, seven and six record, lost in the bowl game, probably should have been a win. Probably, we'll say that. Uh, but regardless, post game win expectancy last year was 7.23 and 4.77. So maybe should have been uh, exactly what they were seven to five in the regular season roundabout. Projected SP plus record has them at about eight and a half wins. The win total sits at seven and a half. Juice to the over at minus 160. Uh, if you wanted to go under, that's plus 130. And that's a pretty good payout. Pretty good payout if they only go 7-5. to five. Um, Looking at the numbers from last year, number 22, offensive PPA per drive. The question is on the defense. Defensive PPA per drive is number 91 in the country. Uh, they could not stop explosive plays. It, it was a bit of an issue. But looking at the returning production, they're 73%. That's number 28 in the country. 81% on offense. Defense, uh, you got to replace some guys. So let's start off on the offense. Uh, offense coordinator Alex Golesh. Uh, this is really Heupel's offense. I mean, bottom line, he's run it since he was at Missouri uh, with some tweaks here and there, of course, as he's learned. But uh, if Hendon Hooker can stay healthy, like Heisman finalist caliber quarterback here, uh, 31 touchdowns, three interceptions last year. I mean, he was just uber efficient. Running back room is loaded. You got Small, Wright, Dixon, etc. The wide receiver room, pretty loaded as well. I don't know that they've got that one playmaker that's really going to scare teams. Right, I don't think you got that guy right now. Maybe I'm wrong. Like maybe it's uh, Cedric Tillman. Maybe it's you know one of these new guys that's coming in. We'll see. Um, but they do have a lot of upperclassmen who saw a ton of snaps last year. Brew McCoy transferred in. Maybe he's the guy. Maybe he's finally found somewhere that that he'll fit in. Uh, the offensive line has got six back with 400 plus snaps. A lot of depth. A lot of talent at that position there. Uh, defense coordinator. We'll move over to the defensive side of the ball. Tim Banks, the D allowed 33.6 points per game in SEC play last year. And bottom line, this is the side of the ball that's going to determine whether or not the Volunteers are an SEC East threat. If they are legit contenders for a championship, they have to be better on this side of the ball, period. Uh, the secondary was better than the front seven last year. Uh, the defense was number 68 passing PPA allowed, but they were number 91 rushing PPA allowed. At the secondary, does lose the safety Jackson, quarterback Taylor. Good news is there's 12 players back with 250-plus snaps, so that's definitely good. Uh, you got Georgia Tech transfer uh, cornerback Walker that comes in. He could start immediately. There are freshmen that could play key roles on defense, uh, especially on that defensive line. So look for a lot of that there. Uh, they are projected favorites in eight games. They have got five toss-ups on the schedule. Again, for me, a toss-up, any game that is projected to be within one score all the way up to eight points. I told you the win total sits at seven and a half and it's juiced uh, to the over at minus 160. The keys to the season here, fans need to not set their expectations too high on this because last year uh, he comes in, Hypo comes in and resurrects what was basically a dead program, Right. Uh, team does look pretty good. They are not on the same talent level as the elites just yet. They are close, very close. And if they keep recruiting like gangbusters like they've been doing, then yes, obviously that's going to be good things. But keep the expectation level normal. Don't expect them to go undefeated. I'll just say that. Uh, the offense is exciting, but I will say it's – I'm not going to – I put easy to break down on here. Um, I'm not going to say it's easy. I'll just say there are defenses – if they have the right pieces, that will be able to know exactly what Tennessee is doing, and they'll be able to stop it. There were several of them that were able to stop it last year. Uh, it can always keep Tennessee in games with just a single play, right? That offense is super exciting. So we'll see exactly what a year of film means for all the teams on their schedule this year because uh, they, they got a lot of them that have already seen this offense now, and I think these defensive coordinators – are going to be really prepped for it this year. Defense was number 113 in scoring opportunities last year. Uh, they gave up 80 drives inside their own 40-yard line. I mean, that is just a monster number. Uh, number 97 in points per scoring opportunity. So when they did get down there, they didn't get a lot of stops anyway. Uh, getting stops is going to be the key to contending this year. Uh, I've got them at 9-3. and three. I really like this team. I like the, I like the roster strength. I like the fact they've got so many guys back on offense. I like the way the schedule sets up. Uh, at Pitt early, like 
definitely get them early before that offense has a chance to really figure out what they're doing because I don't know that their offense will be able to keep up with Tennessee at this point. Not with Signetti, not with what they're doing. Um, after that, you know, you got Florida coming in in week four. Yeah, Florida's already going to have two pretty tough schedule, uh, two tough games at that point. I think this is uh, a prime spot for Tennessee to get that win. Then they come off a bye, they go down to Baton Rouge. I don't know that I necessarily like LSU a whole lot. I think they, I think Tennessee could be five and zero oh before they go to Alabama or before Alabama comes in Knoxville. Um, I don't, you know, I look at this. I've got a loss to Kentucky. I mean, I feel like they could win that one. I feel like they could maybe beat South Carolina. Like maybe the I see nine and three here. I don't really know who it's going to be to. I've got a loss at South Carolina. I've got a loss to Kentucky, and I've got a loss to Alabama. I've got Tennessee beating Georgia. I think nine and three would be just huge. Uh, if it's a loss to Georgia and Alabama, and then just one more loss elsewhere, I think that's a monster year, a fantastic season, and definitely something to build on as the recruiting continues. Now, uh, I hope the volunteer fans would be happy with that, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I would take the over at minus 160. I think it's a small price to pay for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.